to another Agile IT Tech Talk. I'm your host, Sean Spicer. And today we're gonna to be looking at how Visio and Power Automate work together. Um, so with Visio and Power Automate, organizations can go from a Visio diagram to a fully functioning automation um, really quickly. And the Power Automate designer for Visio allows business users to create Power Automate flows from within Visio. And it begins with a business process diagram. Um, that documents all of the steps in the process. It gives you a really clean, um, at-a-glance view on a single pane. And using visual tools, users can connect those diagrams to triggers, actions, and data sources, all in a no-code environment. Visio can then generate a workflow that automates that business process directly into Power Automate, enabling the business to streamline their processes and make them more reliable. So, as always, we are in a demo environment for Contoso, and today we're going to be looking at the roles of Alan DeYoung and our good friend Megan Bowen, uh, who evidently we didn't actually fire in that previous tech talk. And part of Alan's job as HR manager is making sure that when a new employee is hired, they can be integrated into the organization as quickly and smoothly as possible. Now, if you're a CEO, if you're a marketing manager, HR manager, you know that the onboarding process is incredibly important and also incredibly prone to little slip ups. Um, and in practice, it usually involves a lot of manual steps. You have to send emails to multiple people and then you've got to follow up manually to get the required approvals. Um, there are multiple records to update and these are stored in different locations. Um, then you have to update the company org chart. Um, and all of this is usually done by hand. And when the process goes wrong, productivity suffers and the new employee starts out with a really poor impression of your company. And so today we're going to show how to automate that entire process using Visio and Power Automate. So if you're a visual thinker and you're comfortable in working in Visio, um, this is really simple. Um, and this is what started out as an existing map of business process. And this diagram shows the workflow steps needed to bring a new employee on board. And Visio is really a powerful tool for visualizing these processes. And because it's familiar, it's simple to lay out this process quickly and you get to keep it all on one page. Um, another great thing about this diagram is that it conforms to the Business Process Modeling Notation Standard or BPMN, which is a widely recognized standard for business diagrams, uh, which means that it's extensible and can be moved between businesses. Um, so this process starts when a new employee is added and then these diamonds are decision gates. These make sure that all the required information has been captured, such as the new hire's department. Um, this workflow will then check which department the new hire belongs to. Um, it will um, update records in SharePoint, and it will send emails to the employee, their manager, and the head of HR. Um, it will also schedule the onboarding meeting that needs to be scheduled with the hiring team. So let's jump over to Excel here. So this process touches several people, documents, and data sources. So for example, this Excel spreadsheet uh, stored in SharePoint is used by Alan's team to keep the org chart up to date. Um, so we've, here we've got a data table, and then we've got the Visio org chart. Um, here we can see a list of employees in the Excel data table, and we use the Visio data visualizer add-in to create an org chart that visualizes the data. Um, this process that Alan is working on will update this data automatically, enabling Alan to quickly update the Visio diagram that it's based on. Um, so let's look at Visio. So Alan's workflow is going to connect to several apps uh, and services, including SharePoint and email. And he can map the diagram shapes to workflow services quickly using the export pane. So most of the mapping has been done already. Um, and we just need to double check the work before we create the workflow. Um, so like I said, the whole process starts when the new employee is added and that employee will be added to a list in SharePoint. <clears throat> so if we look at triggers and actions, so triggers are events that kick off a process, in this case, hiring a new employee. Um, and then actions are steps that can happen in a process. Um, Power Automate comes out of the box with hundreds of triggers and actions. Um, these include not just Office 365 and other Microsoft services, but hundreds of third-party services like YouTube. Um, 
But in this case, we're going to be working with SharePoint. And we want a custom trigger here when an item is created. So the SharePoint icon here shows which action has been mapped to uh, the employee added step. Uh, here we're able to do all this setup ourselves with no input from IT, no burden on IT. Um, so once it's completely filled out, this is what your diagram is going to look like. Each step has been associated with the appropriate action. Um, and then we go ahead and we can export this to flow. And a new workflow is created in Power Automate. When that's finished, we can click right through into Power Automate. So this flow includes multiple connections to SharePoint, Excel, and Outlook, as well as an approval process, event scheduling, and several email notifications. And we didn't have to write a line of code to create it. It all came straight there from Visio. So let's go ahead <clears throat> and edit. So here's the whole workflow in Power Automate. So Power Automate gives users the ability to quickly create workflow automation that spans all of those Microsoft and third-party services. Um, here you can see the workflow with each state step out as a distinct element. And there's a huge amount of customization and fine tuning that can be done here. So let's see how we would put the final uh, finishing touches on this flow. So here's the first step in the process. Um, a new employee is added to SharePoint. We're going to go ahead and specify which list. And then let's look at what happens when we check department. So one of the reasons I do like Visio is when you're working with flows, the way that these collapse um, can be um, a little, it's not so much confusing as much as it's um, obscured and you don't get to see as much. So we're going to go ahead, check the department. If department is equal to marketing. And then if yes, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start and wait for an approval. That's and then check approval status. Scroll down and look at all this. So here you can see the additional steps that will occur when a new employee is hired, including updating the items in SharePoint, sending an onboarding email to the employee, updating the organization data in Excel create the meeting invite, and then send the confirmation email. Um, so all of these steps were added automatically based on that Visio diagram. This saves a ton of time. So let's look at the demo. And we'll go ahead and edit. So here's what the flow looks like once all of that customization and configuration is completed. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and trigger this workflow by adding a new employee and see how it all happens. Now we'll go to the HR list here in SharePoint. So the marketing team has just hired a new associate, Alex Wilbur, and he's going to be the test case for this new workflow. Alex's manager, Megan Bowen, who we, I guess we didn't fire, um, has agreed to help with the testing. Um, let's go ahead and create the new guy. And first we're going to add Alex. Uh, to a SharePoint list that we maintain in the HR department. We're going to go ahead and quick fill all of this. Save. And now we've got employee ID CY120. We want to go to edit our flow. So here in Power Automate, we can monitor the workflow. <clears throat> After a moment, you can see that the workflow has started, and not much more is going to happen here because the flow has reached its first gate. Um, Megan Bowen needs to approve the new hire. When the flow hits the approval gate, an email is sent to Megan asking you to approve or deny the new hire. Now, these approval gates are really cool, and we did a great tech talk um, about maybe nine months ago um, where we showed how to automate cloud app security with flow to automatically block shadow IT hit an approval gate and send a message in Teams to an IT administrator where a user tries or starts up a new SaaS app that's not approved. And the system automatically blocks it 
and then sends this message over to IT, where IT can decide with a single click to unblock it. Um, so again, security through, ex uh, permission through exception, security by default uh, is what I'm thinking to say here. But let's see what this looks like in Megan's email. So here's uh, Megan's email, already focused on that new employee approval, approval email. And all she has to do is she can click approve. She can give a reason if she wants or give a note. And then she can go ahead and submit. Now the workflow is running behind the scenes, doing all the required updates. And you can see that it's already updated the email here in Outlook. So you don't wind up uh, with multiple approvals. One thing that's cool about the appro approval gates in Power Automate is if these are sent out to an entire team, if one person approves, all of those emails are going to show that the status has been updated and that it is approved or denied. Um, so once this process is finished, Megan is going to get an automated email informing her that the new hire has been processed. Um, now let's go back to Alan. And this process used to take a few days and now it's been reduced just to a couple minutes. So we can see that it is currently running, but we can also look at the history of every time it's run. And one of the actions taken by the workflow is to update that org chart we looked at earlier. So let's go back to Excel. So here's that org chart we were looking at earlier. And when the workflow runs, it adds Alex to the data table in the spreadsheet. And all we have to do to update is to refresh and there's Alex, and our org chart is completely updated with one click. So this is just a hint of the many different things you can do. And what I really wanted to show off today is how you can use Visio to create flow charts that actually become automations. And this allows companies to quickly go from documenting a business process to automating it um, in just a few clicks. Um, and often when you do an automation like this, the efficiencies you see scale across the entire organization. And speaking of scalability, one of the nice things about Power Automate is it is extensible with code. So if you have a dev team and you have a Power App or automations, you can add in uh, other APIs. You can bring in your own third-party services. You can add your own line of business apps and extend them as far as they need to go. Um, What's really nice here though, is that flowchart in Visio giving you a single place to look and a single at a glance view of what those automations look like. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. Um, for those of you watching online, a reminder, Agile IT Tech Talks are a service for Agile IT's MSP and CSP clients. These are closed door sessions. Uh, we do make the demo videos available on YouTube, but we're going to cut off recording here in a minute, and our, our clients are going to be able to ask questions about what we've just reviewed, and we can talk about how that actually impacts them in their own businesses. Now, if you are watching online, feel free to ask a question down below. Give us a like and follow. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great week. Stay safe out there. See you next time.